Masters, mistresses, the doctor requires materials in order to maintain the TARDIS and ensure continued functionality. He similarly requires carbon-based comestibles to sustain his own biological functions and existence. Master would never say this, but he requires aid beyond that supplied by this unit in order to acquire these. To aid the doctor in his various tasks and creations, this can be most effectively achieved via Patreon or Substack subscriptions, or through donations directly to PayPal, or if you desire physical goods in return for your contributions, written accounts of my travels with the Doctor are also available on Amazon. Links are in the description below. Thank you, Masters, Mistresses. Hi. Dr. Alex here and welcome to a short little video where I'm just experimenting with a speed test between two of the ThinkPads I own with different generation Intel i processors. They're both i7s but my ThinkPad Edge 15 has got a generation 1 i7 processor, dual core, an i7 M640 or 640M depending on how you see them written down, whereas my T420 ThinkPad has got a quad core i7 second generation an i7-2860QM processor, which is understandably faster, but I just wanted to show using the benchmarks built into the operating system on both of them how much faster the quad-core is compared with the dual-core. One of the reasons I'm doing this is because both machines have been upgraded pretty much as far as they can go, and so the results will be max versus max in terms of their upgradability. They're both running solid-state drives, the H15 has only got a 250 gigabyte drive, uh, whereas the T420 has a 2 terabyte drive, but they're both solid state drives and neither of them are anywhere near full. So they should be fairly similar in their capabilities and operational speed. Everything else is as similar as possible. To be fair, the Edge 15's maximum memory you could get into it is 8 gigabytes, so it's running with 8 gigabytes, whereas the T420's max is 16 gigabytes, so it's running with 16 gigabytes, but you know, that's they're both maxed out. Both computers are running with Linux Mint 18.3 and in this test we'll be using the same benchmark software that comes with Linux Mint 18 anyway, which is called Hard Info. Now I mentioned these are both upgraded to the maximum possible. This is pretty much as true as I could make it. Um, they are both running, I think, 45 watt processors, whereas they both shipped originally with 35 watt processors, so they're a little bit hotter than they should be. But I think certainly in the case of the T420, it was designed to run with i7s at that power and temperature rating. The H15 copes perfectly well with the slightly higher temperature M640, so that seems happy. And the T420 seems to be running very well with its new quad-core processor, which has recently just been slightly upgraded to the one I just mentioned, the 2860QM, from its previous processor. I will do another video about how its new processor compares to its old processor in a follow-up to this uh, it's a slight surprise. Um, it hasn't really gained much in its current upgrade, but it is now the max it could possibly be without going into another temperature slash power bracket, and thereby risking the whole thing melting down with a massive overheat. So I can't really think of much more I need to say about the two machines. I've talked about their specs and their current processors and hardware. So let's get down to running the actual benchmarks. Now I'm not entirely sure what the various benchmarks do in detail. Some of them I can make a guess at like probably, but um, I'll run them together so you can see their relative speed differences. And you can work out their differences in power from the figures given probably better than I can. So the first test we're going to run is one called CPU Blowfish. Um, I'll run them and talk about them. I'll run them together as best I can. And not that it really makes any difference because you're going to get the figures that it generates at the end anyway. So you'll see the actual numerical difference. And if I know anything about it, I'll let you know. If I could just say number, then I'll do that. And there's no elegant way to do this as it's currently set up without my arm getting in the way, apparently. But here we go. Well, as you could probably see, the T420 with its quad core finished a lot quicker. And and the results do kind of speak for themselves. So the dual core 640M got a result in seconds of 3.96 seconds to run the test, while the quad core managed 1.96 seconds to do the same test. So 
just over twice as fast, we shouldn't be a massive surprise that it does have twice as many processors. Let's do the next test, which is CPU crypto hash, whatever that means. So let's run them together. Unfortunately, my arm will get in the way again. Once again, the uh, quad core went really fast. In this case, the higher results are better because it's megabits per second. The dual core 640M managed to do 314.74 megabits per second, whereas the quad core managed 661.23 megabits per second. So again, over twice as fast for the quad core. The next one is CPU Fibonacci. Again, the quad core was visibly faster. Again, the results in seconds lower is better. The dual core 640M managed 2.3 seconds, while the T420 with its 2860 QM managed 1.57 seconds. So again, way faster, but that's no big surprise. It's a second gen versus a first gen processor. The next one is CPU N Queens. And wow, the quad core really visibly went so much faster than the dual core that time. The dual core's result uh, is, again, it's in seconds and lower is better. The dual core has managed 6.66. Oh no, the test result of the beast. Whereas the quad core has managed, wow, 0 0.56 seconds. Uh, way faster with the quad core versus the dual core for that test. That's the CPU and Queen's test. I have no idea what it's doing, but uh, yeah, the quad core is obviously way faster than the dual core. The next one up is FPUFFT. I have no idea what that stands for, but let's run it. Okay, so the 640M managed to do 1.16 seconds, and again, lower is better. Well, the quad core did 0.98 seconds, so not such a massive difference on this one, which makes me wonder if the FPU FFT is doing a single core test, in which case the two cores aren't radically different in terms of their speeds. On the, the individual threads are not radically different in their speed, so perhaps this was just testing one thread versus one thread. But again, the quad core has still come out faster because it's individual threads are still a little bit faster than the individual threads on the old dual core first generation. Final one in the array of tests is FPU ray tracing, which must be something to do with processing graphics in order to produce ray tracing, but as to the guts of it, I have no idea what it's doing. Well, let's run the test and see what happens. Go. Again, the quad core was visibly faster than the dual core, I'm not sure if the differences are that radical. Let's have a look. So again, results in seconds lower is better. For the dual core first gen i7, the results were 3.89 seconds, whereas the quad core generation 2 i7 has done 2.90 seconds, so appreciably faster, but not as dramatic as some of the other tests that we've run. But there you go. So we have done the speed test of a G1 i7 versus a G2 i7, and I think you can see in many ways how much blindingly faster the G2 is to the G1, the quad core is versus the dual core, um, that they're both basically maxed out, as I say. You can put on paper higher spec CPUs into the edge in generation one, but they all lack inbuilt GPUs, which means that on balance, the machine runs a lot slower because there's no GPU backing it up. With the G2, with the second gen i7s, there are some faster ones, but again, their power ratings tick up again. Going 10 watts over the one that was rated for is fine. You have to remember to use the higher power power supplies. I'm using the 90 watt power supplies on all of these, as opposed to the 60 watts ones they often came with as standard. But apart from that, heating, overheating problems tends not to be a problem. But if I went to the next ones up for the G2 processors, they would be at least another 10 watts hotter. So from 35 to 45 as it is, we then go up to 55. And that's just not something I want to risk running with. So there you go. Um, that's the speed test between an Edge 15 running a G1 i7 processor versus the T420 running a G2 i7 processor. The first being a dual core, the second being a quad core. And uh, yeah, I hope that was interesting to someone out there. And until the next video, to all my watchers and listeners, 
I hope you enjoyed this one. And until the next, take care.